How accurate are speed testing sites like speedtest.net and fast.com? Should we be using those as results to find our ISP and complain about the terrible internet speed? Well, the answer is yes and uh, no. So here's what you need to know about testing your internet speed. Hey, welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with the Techie Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadget, apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. So typically this is what happens. You start watching some Netflix and it starts to buffer. Or you're in the middle of a game and it starts to lag so badly that your teammates leave you behind. The first thing you do is make sure you're still connected. Once you realize you are, what you do is you head off to speedtest.net or fast.com or any of those speed testing sites. But here's the thing, and you might have noticed this, when you run a test on speedtest.net, for example, and then you run another one on fast.com, you're gonna get two separate results, which is kind of weird because if the whole point of speed testing site is to test your speed, surely they should be exactly the same. So if they're not the same, does that mean it's not reliable? What's actually going on? So when you hit the speed testing sites, typically they would check for three things. It's your upload speed, your download speed, and then your ping or your latency. Now, all of those are important and I've done an entire video on that be available up here in the cards or in the description below. Go check those out and it will tell you how much internet speed you actually need. So without going to the technical gump, this is what they do. Number one is that they identify your location via your IP address, your public IP address. Number two is that they find the closest servers around you. Number three, be out of all those closest servers that are around you, they look for the ones that's gonna be the fastest for you. And they do that using like their own internal ping tests. So now you have got you and you've got the closest server and that's when you start doing the upload, the download and the latency test for you and your internet speed. Okay, so if they all work the same, why aren't the results exactly the same on speedtest.net and fast.com and others? Well, that's because there are a whole bunch of variables. So the first variable is your internal network. When you run a speed test, essentially what you're doing from your computer or your phone or your tablet, you're initiating a command to say, hey, go and get me the speed test. Now, whilst you're doing that, your entire network is still working. You're not gonna get the same results if it's just you on the network doing a test versus you and the whole family and somebody's downloading the updates to the latest PS4 games and someone is, is watching Netflix and someone's doing a Zoom call. So already we have the variables so the two sites are not gonna be the same. By the way, the most accurate kind of test that you can run is isolating everyone off the network and making sure it's only you, ideally hardwired into your router and then doing your test straight from there. Okay, the second variable that you have to contend with is that your own ISP may be throttling your bandwidth. It may be speeding some things up and slowing some things down. And again, I've done a video on that. Link will be in the description below where you can test if your own ISP is throttling your bandwidth. And the third variable of why the tests are not the same is because each individual system works slightly differently. Their formulas are different, the algorithm is different, the architecture is different, the server loads are different, the connection times are different, the way that they set up is different, and therefore you're not gonna marry like for like. Okay, so uh, now what? Are we saying that these speed tests on sites are not reliable? What I'm saying is you gotta treat it as a barometer and not a science. In other words, these speed test sites are a good indicator of what's going on with your speed, but they're not an exact measurement of your megabits per second going up and down the lines. So what should you be doing before you call your ISP complaining about your internet speed? Well, what you should be doing is, number one, go to the websites, run a speed test, but run it multiple times. Two or three times is probably good, and then you'll be able to get an average, an average of the upload, average of the download, and an average of your ping. Now, some of you will be saying you should be flushing your DNS, you should be getting a new lease on your IP and a whole bunch of other geeky stuff. Well, realistically, most of us are not gonna go through that trouble. And if you're that tech savvy, you're probably not even watching this anyways and just complaining in the comments already. So we're gonna ignore them. And what we're gonna do is not just run multiple times the speed test on one server, also fire up the same test on another server. So now you're getting an average from fast.com and an average from speedtest.net, for example that's gonna give you a nice indication of what's going on with your speed. If you're not at at least 70 to 80% of what you're paying for, 
then something is wrong. So for example, if you're paying for 100 megabits per second, but only getting 10 megabits per second, that is terrible and you should be phoning your ISV. So if you're not getting between 70 and 80% of the speed that you're paying for, check out these videos down here of how to troubleshoot your network and how to get faster Wi-Fi before you pick up the phone to the ISP. Hit the head below to subscribe if it's your first time here. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in those videos. Fix your Wi-Fi. Let's go.